A lot of little attention to detail goes a long way when curating the perfect interior decoration for your dream home. While everyone is worrying about the paint job and the furniture color not matching, they miss these tiny details that can make their interiors that much better. So let's talk about some bad interior design mistakes that occur on the daily, and how you can either fix or avoid them. But before that... Hey designers, welcome to Design Media, where we break down and analyze anything around design, from home interiors to industrial products. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. The primary way you can screw up an interior is by not having a proper plan. And by that, I mean a proper floor plan, along with dimensions of an area you'll need to fill, either with art or with furniture. Just save it along with your notes. And the next time you come across a piece of furniture you like, or is on a discount, you can quickly check if it fits your plans. This is the measure twice and cut once version of interior designing, and is similarly important. Another big mistake is hanging your curtains way too low. Short curtains often make the ceiling feel low, whereas long ones can make the ceiling feel higher, effectively opening up the space and giving it a regal look. As a rule of thumb, the perfect curtain size is where it hangs two inches from the ceiling and just lightly dusts the floor, rather than pooling at the bottom. Similar to curtains, buying the wrong size rug can often make the space feel too small, not making effective use of the floor space. The perfect rug is different for every space, but something that goes halfway or fully under the furniture while covering the floor is a good start. You also don't want to overdo it and have the rugs creeping up your walls. And while you are shopping for rugs, get something comfortable, something that adds another dimension of sensory pleasure beneath your feet. Every interior plan starts with a good lighting plan and is often overlooked. Every room or region needs to have three kinds of light, the ambient, task, and the accent. Ambient is often dimmer, but effectively lights up the place, without being overly bright or hurting the eyes. Task-oriented lighting, like desk lamps, are for studying and brighter. Ambient lighting is done to add a cool touch, usually under furniture, behind mirrors, or wall decor. To cut corners, builders often use the least number of cheapest fixtures out there, so talk with your builder and work with them to find the best lighting plan. Proper lighting is functional and also makes a space feel bigger and comfortable. Another very common mistake is putting furniture up against the wall, even when there's a ton of floor space or an apartment. Yeah, furniture up against the wall totally makes sense. But if it's a roomy area, spaced apart furniture can often look weird and even unwelcoming. After all, it's your crib. Make it feel cozy. While you rearrange your furniture, keep the spaces behind the furniture in your mind and how you can access them. You don't want the furniture to block passage. This also ties into the final biggest mistake, that is ignoring traffic flow. Too many floor plans do not take traffic flow and accessibility into consideration. In fact, you can plan the flow of traffic with the help of rugs. Yes, rugs have more than one role. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like a video on planning traffic flow with the help of rugs. There is nothing more annoying than walking into furniture and stubbing your toe in the middle of the night. And a clear passage can improve circulation and maximize flow of traffic. So these are a few ways you can improve your interior design game and avoid common mistakes. Did we miss anything? If you found today's video interesting or learned something new about design, come back for more videos like this and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.